an early morning. Wait for me. But I never set an alarm. Never put the clock on. Never set an alarm. Is anyone else in? No. Just me. I usually sit here so I can see everybody coming in and what time they come in. You have to understand, it's the toughest league in the world, and if you try and cut corners, you'll get found out. So the important thing is to, to make sure you lay the foundations. When I first came in, there was lots of people doing their own things, and everybody now is pointing at that star in the sky and trying to get there. I'm not into philosophies. I think it's a load of nonsense. I think it's for bookkeepers. I'm into winning. For all aspiring managers, if you don't win football matches, you don't last long. Curly stick the radio on, mate. West Brom is a, it's a fantastic football club. It's got unbelievable tradition. You know, one of the founder members of the, the Football League. It's been a little bit of a yo-yo club for a few years and for the last, what is it, six or seven years, we've stayed in the Premiership and, and gradually built. Situated in the West Midlands, the town of West Bromwich is located in the Black Country, named for the soot that once spewed from the industrial era chimneys dotting the surrounding landscape. And while chimneys no longer darken the sky, an honest, hard-working English character has steeped permanently into the area's cultural fabric, which the club has proudly retained and displayed to present day. When the Premier League started, it was all about Aston Villa and Birmingham, really. And but now we're probably, especially this season, established as the number one club in the Midlands. And I think the the fans take great pride in that. You know, it's a small group, um, but there's good lads. We've got really good lads in there now, and um, they've had Saturday and Sunday off, and they're in today, and they'll work today and tomorrow. Will be quite hard for them. Get yourselves in pairs, Fletch. Make sure you've got a good partner. You know, there's a real winning spirit within the team at the minute, and we give everything in every game, which is something that's a given under Tony Pulis. You know, as a manager, he demands 100% from everyone. Yep, nice and bright, nice and bright. He's been around a long time in management. He's very shrewd, very streetwise, and he knows how to get the best out of his players. And you know, sometimes you know the old school is, is, is quite refreshing, really. His enthusiasm and his work rate and his drive is second to none. He makes that emphasise in his teams. We play exactly the way he is. We're hard to beat, we're hard working, we're honest. We give everything we go on that pitch and, and, and we replicate his personality. Finally, we've got players where he can implement the style he wants and that's resulted in um, a lot more attacking football this season, especially at home, and has resulted in us taking ourselves to the next level. And We're punching above our weight in the Premier League. Um, we're looking to finish the season and try and get the most points West Brom have had in the Premier League. We've never had 50 points in the Premier League. That's the target. It would you know, make a little bit of history. Today's training followed an off weekend for the players and the effects of an intense workout will surely be felt by all those involved. But sore legs or not, boots need cleaning. Today, West Brom welcome a special guest to the training centre. After seeing the effects of another boy battling cancer, Dylan Rose was determined to help. So he started growing his hair in the hopes of donating it to a child in need. And how old are you, Dylan? Eight. Eight. How long have you been growing your hair? 14 months. 14 months, fantastic. Now, it's time for a trim. In enters Dylan's favourite baggy, Ben Foster who swaps his goalie gloves for a set of shears. You can show me what to do. I've cut my own hair a few times and that, but oh, I've never cut anyone else's. Sorry, Dylan. Cut there. Right next to the band, yeah? yeah right. As close to the band as you can get. That was weird. <laughs> That's so weird. Oh, look at her. Look at her. 
Oh, we're Almost. flying here, mate. Look at this. <laughs> you fine, right? Give me a high five, you. Proud of you. Awesome job. That's so blonde. <laughs> and crazy. The cut is complete, but the day isn't over. West Brom have arranged for a private training session with Dylan's favourite goalkeeper. Who's just had that haircut by Ben? Oh, blimey. He's a better barber than goalkeeper, <laughs> isn't he? <laughs> Players are finished with training for the day, but there's always an opportunity for the club to connect with its fans. January signings Jake Livermore and Mark Wilson autographed jerseys at the club's shop. And later that evening, Tony Pulis arrives at BBC Radio, willing and ready to take calls from Baggies fans. About 20, 30 years ago, it used to happen quite a lot. Managers would come in on football phone-ins, but now, obviously, the sport has grown so enormously in this country. Managers tend not to do as many phone-ins. So fair play to, to Tony for saying yes, and, and Albion as well as a club, saying, yeah, let's, let's get him in and host a football phone-in. Tonight, a special football phone-in, the West Bromwich Albion manager, Tony Pulis. Pleasure to see you. Paul, evening. And uh, we'll talk to as many fans as we can. Let's go to Naomi. Tony, I think that Darren Fletcher, what a fantastic leader and what an ambassador for the club. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm pushing him now to get involved in um, in coaching. I want him to take his coaching badges. I'm certain that he'd want to stay in football because football is his life. It's very important that we do communicate with the supporters and it's an opportunity for them to, to ask me questions. You have to respect that they are very, very important people and they're the lifeblood of, uh, of every football club. Stephen Sheffnall. Hello, Steve. Paul, can I just quickly say to Tony, thank you for giving us the pride back in our football club. And also, the two of the best signings since I've been a Baggies fan, um, Fletcher and Johnny Evans. And what he said about trying to get Fletcher into coaching, I don't, I don't wish Tony to go away anywhere for the next 10 years, but he would be a great, great successor. But seriously, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks to West Bromwich Albion for... Uh allowing us to have Tony in as well. Back tomorrow for Drive and the football phone in from 5.30. OK. Cheers. Yeah. OK, thank you. Thanks very Cheers. much. Coming up next, Winter Storm Doris batters the West Midlands as the baggies prepare for Bournemouth. Yeah, just concerned about Bournemouth and to make sure we're prepared properly for what will be a tough game. I think it's the worst weather for any sport. Morning. The Met Office is warning of widespread disruption as Storm Doris brings 60 mile an hour winds. Forecasters are warning it could damage buildings and affect power lines with gusts of 70 to 80 miles an hour expected on higher ground. Winter Storm Doris has arrived, but the 40 point mark is within reach, so the training must go on. Go! Chop him! Good side! I think it's the worst weather for any sport. Um, and, and I think for keepers, you know, it's hard enough for me to actually get the ball in the spot I need it to serve from. So, But to be fair, you know, the, once the lads got their heads around it, they were pretty good today. So I was pleased with them. A wayward Ben Foster punt lands somewhere in the trees. And naturally, Doris is to blame. Of looking for football tonight. You get your, your legs cut on those brambles in there, did you? Me modelling career is over. <laughs> Outside, the storm becomes too much of a disruption and training ends early. But inside, preparations for the match day programme are rocking and rolling. Every year, I try not to just go with a bland photograph of a player or an action shot or whatever. So I was trying to think of what we could do this year. And, and classic album covers is something that I'm interested in anyway. Classic albums, you know, the Springsteens and the Pink Floyd, some Beatles and whatever. And that became the, the idea that we, that we went with. So the Bournemouth one, we've got Led Zeppelin, uh, the Mothership compilation, with the, the Zeppelin over the top of the East End. 
the colours work well as well, because it's black and red, which obviously ties in with Bournemouth too. So everything we try and have some something where it turns on, on that game as well, if we possibly can. Doris has left the country, so training rambles on. It's Pulis's last session with the squad before tomorrow's match. If you keep coming to the ball, they'll just block you up and block you up and you'll be too tight. A focus of Tony Pulis's coaching is set-piece training, as Gareth McCauley effectively demonstrates in today's session. At 37, the defender is the league's oldest outfield player, and with five goals scored this season, he's enjoying a career year. After practice, McCauley puts those years of experience to good use as he meets with local youths about career planning. The guys have got a few questions they'd like to ask you about yeah. your employability skills and how employable you'd be. Cool. Charlie? What was, your, uh, what was your school life like when you were at school? It was tough. You know, I tried to, tried to do my best, get the, the best results I could, because you know, as, as much as you want to be a footballer and that, you always have to have something that you can, you can drop back on. I finished school and then I worked as um, a draftsman. The main thing I want to do is go into coaching. Um, if I could help somebody else, um, go on to have a career, that would be a fantastic thing for, for me to achieve. As the squad remains focused on the imminent Bournemouth match, club chairman John Williams welcomes the board of directors for a quarterly meeting. Today's topic, all things Albion. Before Tony Pulis's pre-match press conference, two auction winners are given a behind-the-scenes tour of the training centre and bear witness to a storied Friday tradition. Part of the ritual we do on a Friday is the famous cap. <laughs> he, lives there. he will not go into a press conference without his cap, as, is that you, right? as no, you've probably brilliant. seen. Yeah. Morning. Morning. How important are these next two or three games? Yeah, just concerned about Bournemouth. And, and you know, that's the most important thing, is just to, uh, to make sure we're prepared properly for what will be a tough game. You know, it's nothing better than and winning home games in front of your home supporters. So to win the games and win them the way we've played as well and, and scoring quite a few goals has been absolutely fantastic. Um, so, you know, may it long continue and hopefully right till the end of the season. Less than 24 hours until kickoff, final arrangements are made with a particular focus on order and organisation. This is what they're wearing tomorrow. Some of them will have two or three different skin tops, you know. But it means that everything is on their pile, so they don't ask you for anything on match day. So if they need it, it's there for them. So. Absolutely, yeah. The week's preparation is nearly complete, and all that's left to do is rest. <laughs> Guys, see you tomorrow. I love all of you. Thank you. For Tony Pulis, tomorrow's opponent is a familiar one. Bournemouth is where the Welshman's playing career ended and where his managerial career began. I had a great time at Bournemouth and the family home is still down that way um, in Poole. And Eddie was a, a young apprentice when I was manager. And so there's a lot of feeling still there. They've done fantastically well. All set. Yeah, everything's done, everything's prepared. It, just make sure everybody gets out of bed. Good condition for tomorrow. Get all. Rest. Please. Next up, it's match day at the Hawthorns. The Hawthorns is a happy place to be right now. It will be a short walk through the tunnel and into the rain of the West Midlands. Boy, boy. Every match. If I didn't support West Brom, that'd be it. I'd be kicked out. <laughs> I would be disowned. Tell them that 
tell me what the term boing boing means? It means like it's like a celebration for when you score. It's like boing boing. Welcome back to Albion Radio with me, Jez Holland, and our regular summariser, the great Dave Bowl. It's six wins from the last seven here in the Premier League for Tony Pulis's side. Tony, you mentioned in the programme you've got a really strong position in the league now. Is the tough thing going forward going to be to maintain that? Well, every game in the Premiership, if we don't um, approach it in the correct manner, you know, we're not going to win games. We've been doing that, everybody's been working uh, together and, and working as a group, and we've got to make sure we maintain that. <laughs> Gary Weaver and Neil McCann have you well we're live at the Hawthorns where West Bromwich Albion face Bournemouth in the rain here this afternoon Albion have won the toss they're going to get us started in this game Ball out towards Fraser who tries to take a touch past Nye and does on the outside still Fraser who's inside the box. That's a penalty for Bournemouth. After just three and a half minutes, and the Cherries have a really early opportunity here to take the lead at the Hawthorns. Josh King is the man on the ball, he's got six Premier League goals. King takes it, King scores the perfect start for Bournemouth. Albion has been hit by an early soccer punch here by the Cherries. They've got some work to do. Wake up! Here is Chadley on the left-hand side. He's got Niam on the overlap. Chadley has to turn backwards. Now Dawson, 25 yards out. Dawson shoots on, deflected it in. Great strike from Craig Dawson. When has he ever scored one of them? Who cares? It's 1-1. Craig Dawson. Exactly a reaction that Tony Pulis would have been looking for. Well, I think we can have a pretty open game here. Ten minutes in, 1-1. towards the back post, headed away, might still fall here for Fletcher, takes it down, Morrison square, chance for Morrison, shoots, takes a deflection and goes past the post. Chris Brunt is over this one again, and it comes now, it's a decent delivery towards the back post, Boris misses it and it's turned in! A huge mistake for Martin Boris! And there was Gareth McCauley to take advantage from it, but what was the Bournemouth goalkeeper doing? Gareth McCauley will not have an easier goal this season. off King's toe by Johnny Evans as he was about to pull the trigger. Brilliant defending and sits Brunt away. There is Brunt, great run by James Morris who's onside, can he take it down? No, he can't. And that's the end of the first half, it all started so well for Bournemouth but then it came tumbling down. The Hawthorns is a happy place to be right now. Bournemouth get the second half underway. Chris Brunt to whip it in towards goal, and it comes from Brunt, there's an Albion man that goes down, in comes Johnny Evans attacking this one, it's up in the air, there's Gareth McCall, he's looping here, it's off the crossbar, falls out here to Rondon, lays it back now to Brunt, chance for Albion to get in again, Brunt gets his crossing towards Dawson, it's knocked it in, at the back post, it's Lester Chadley, well hang on, what are we doing here? 50 minutes into the match and West Brom had dealt a double dose of bad luck. First, an Albion goal is disallowed for offside, and to make matters worse, Craig Dawson is forced off through injury after clashing heads in the build-up. That's a little shuffle now. Chris Brunt has gone into right back. McCauley and Evans, two centre backs. There's a strong back pass and Foster takes a touch and gets away from Benica Fobat. I tell you what, the forward house manager. Wow. They never look the most graceful with the ball at their feet. Goalkeepers today. No. Let's cook again. Rondon has stood his ground and emerged with the ball. Chadley's up with it. He's rolled that through towards Chadley, who couldn't quite take it. Well, this is why Tony Pulis continues to play Salomon Rondon. It's Rondon fights off Gosling, plays it down the line. McLean is inside. McLean shoots. Good save by Boric. A pair of West Brom chances come close to sealing the match, but Bournemouth remain resolute and intensify their pressure at the other end. It's Lise Moussey! Ben Foster comes up with a big, big save. 
to maybe keep the game for West Bromwich Albion. Real drama here at the end of this game. Bournemouth are sending minutes. everybody forward, including Arthur Boric, the goalkeeper. Ryan Fraser over this free kick. In it comes towards the penalty area. It's flicked on. A brilliant save from Ben Foster. Going a good save a couple of moments ago. This is better. In fact, I think this is a three point save. And there is still time, though. It's a Why corner for Bournemouth. Why still playing? This has to be the last kick. In it comes. Foster's there again. It's towards the back post. There's the full time whistle. It's another three points for West Bromwich Albion for Hawthorns. And they've moved to 40 points in the Premier League. Ben Foster surrounded by West Bromwich Albion teammates. Fuzzy was fantastic there, you know, free effort from that is at the end. And he's pulling off saves for the cameras all over the place. <laughs> ben out the two saves, which is the best. Like G said, they're both camera saves. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I see him coming, I'm thinking, here we go, it's going to look decent on match of the day later. But, um, but I think the, the, the most important thing is just winning the game. Ben Foster's late game heroics preserved the three points in theatrical fashion. But the post match talking point centres on the goalkeeper's uncharacteristic move with the ball at his feet. I'll be honest, as soon as I'm doing it, I'm thinking, what are you doing? It's not my game that I normally just put my boot through and stick it through there, just well, kick the thing away. Another great win for the Albion. <laughs> One day off, back in Monday, yeah. Well, ready to go again. The gaffer actually usually works us harder when we win. <laughs> Don't think you're a good team, back to basics. Mad four game, great three points. I thought we deserved it, I know they had a couple of chances at the end. Now we're pleased. 40 points, end of February. Things are going very well and long may it continue. Traditionally, British managers should always have a drink after games. It's gone out of the game a little bit because the foreign coach is coming in. But we've tried to keep it, you know, as close as what it was before. And the opposing manager, you know, is welcomed in to have a bite to eat and a drink with us. Right, guys, keep two saves and getting all the publicity. <laughs> Camera saves as well. On the next episode of Behind the Badge... We have a really big emphasis on preventative strength. I've got a hamstring injury. You know, it's just getting a range back. Two and a half years that I've been here, the, the one thing I've tried to change is the fact that you have to bring good characters in, not just good footballers. Ah, oh, big sweet's going on the way, it's isn't it? Oh, yeah. We've got 12 games left that we can look forward to. Our job as the analyst to build a profile on the teams that we're going to be playing against, how we think we could try and beat them or how we could exploit their weaknesses.